Hey everybody, Crazy Marty here. Today we are going to talk to you about a new trailer that's out. This is the trailer by Forest River or Palomino. It's called Revolve. It's an all-electric, solar-powered wonder, or so they say, but we're going to wonder what it is. This thing's 2021, brand new. It has about four or 5,000 miles on it, and we're going to show you exactly what to expect on a Forest River Revolve made by Palomino, I guess, or whoever. Anyways, Forest River. It's the Revolve. All electric, solar powered. What to expect when you buy the thing for $30,000, $35,000, $40,000, whatever you pay. And uh, some of the faults that it has. Because I'll tell you, this thing, if I, was, if I had it, I would have to say it's a real piece of... Living in aluminum. Let's start out here on the front end. We have, you know, nice, nice. It comes with a nice large window that's dual plane, dual, dual laminated glass. So it's like a, like a windshield. They do put Linex on the thing to help reduce damage and stuff to the front, which is good. Uh, this is a strip light right here. But if you notice, they end <laughs> the strip light here. And they don't put any silicone on it to hold it in place like they do over here. All right, moving down here to the water heater. They're using an electric water heater. This is actually a suburban unit. And if you look inside, they still have the gas valve in there. So you can run a gas line into here, then put 12 volts to it and turn it into a propane unit and actually uh, make it to where it, it'll heat and hold <laughs> and work properly as a regular RV. Uh, the lovely silicone job that they've put around everything, you can see where they've put silicone on and then just wiped it <laughs> with their fingers. And it's literally like that all the way around. So once the silicone changes color just a tiny bit, it's uh, all over the place and it's ugly, it's bad. The wheels, they didn't even center the wheel. They didn't even center the axle over under the trailer so as you can see it's off by several inches we have one finger of clearance in between the back here so if it goes up into the into the wheel housing any it's going to hit and bend up the whole the whole corner here this side over here has you know three fingers so it's off by inch and a half it is a dexter toroflex axle the sewer line just kind of like hangs out here so this whole sewer line is full of full of sewage right now and there's no support to it for up there the only support it has is this little strap right here on the inch and a half line and here we have the the guts of this thing so you can see what's going on in here how you like the wiring job they did looks like they had a 12 year old do it there's wires that are currently pinched underneath the 105 pound battery box there there's 400 amps of lithium phosphate power inside of there i think it's phosphate lipo 4 and then it's got this nice inverter charger here there's another mppt charger back up there that one is for the ground array and then there is this little thing here a dc dc charger so what it is you plug your you plug your your power comes in from your your vehicle here and then it charges the batteries well the problem with this setup is everything has been into the dealer like three times to figure out what's going on uh oh another thing they had the battery disconnect up here if you turn the battery disconnect off all it did was disconnect the battery from the inverter it actually didn't disconnect the batteries themselves so we've rewired it now so the battery power comes up through here and then back down to everything so now you can shut everything off in an emergency they originally had everything set up on just a stock uh charging charging program inside of this thing and in this thing here this one has never worked she's never ever had the light come on for the solar the whole time that she's owned this thing she's i don't know if she's seen the alternator light but it's never never had anything showing that we've had solar power so this thing doesn't work that one up there was 
set at 13.2 volts for maximum power i think it was either 13.2 or 13.4 same with with this here on the stock setting so we had to reprogram those to get it up to 14.2 to top off the batteries and then it goes into float mode so now she's getting power and it actually works for this thing here this one here would actually run the solar panels that are up on the roof on the roof they had everything put in in parallel because this has a maximum uh, solar input voltage of 24 volts that's it and if you're going to have that kind of voltage well you might as well just use a pwm controller instead of an mppt because uh, being that this is only 24 volts and the solar panels put out 27 volts open voltage i'm thinking what's happening is this is this is too small of a unit so uh, either way we've bypassed it replaced it with another mppt charger from amazon so that now it charges luckily now we're getting things to charge for her and it's all good there let's go around the back more of their lovely silicone work that they've done here i mean they they really did a heck of a job they just kind of like took a finger full and stuck it on here and went over across the top instead of actually putting it on the back side of the light and put it what i can't believe it's like that uh it does come with the power pigtail but it doesn't come with sewer hoses and the sewer caps that are in here are continuous she's continuously losing those so there's like you know 200 of them along the highway now let's show you, let's show you some of the sloppy workmanship we've got going on up here you can see where they've used die core to seal up everything well they've allowed the die core to run onto the sides of the actual panels themselves and shade the panel so that kills off those rows there each one has die core that's spread out onto the panels so it kills off part of the 400 watts of power that she's got up here this is the 300 amp 300 watt solar blanket deal that they that comes with it it's made by Renergy also it's a nice thing except they don't give you any extra wire to hook up to there so basically what you have to do is take your panel and take the wires and lay the panel back here and then plug it in directly to there so if your trailer's not in the correct position your panel's going to be shaded so you need to come up with extra wires something else they don't give you you come under here where these jacks are there's all this extra wiring that's just wrapped around the motor for the stabilizer jacks why couldn't they have just taken and cut the cable and then run it straight from here up instead of wrapping it that's that's so hokey it's not even funny you can see more of the silicone that they just ran their finger along here the stereo speakers you tell me which stereo speaker is higher than the other it's almost as if they just walked along and said i'm gonna punch a hole here and i'll punch a hole up over here what's a what's an inch difference between that side and that side nobody will notice an inch right and here we have the wheel and tire that's still not even centered and then they give you this little antenna up there which doesn't rotate that has a, a wi-fi extender in there and it's an am fm tv antenna and i think the manufacturer is out of business because she called the phone number to activate things and the phone number was no good here's some more of their nice extra wiring that they just kind of half-ass cable tie on here what the hell guys that's the kind of quality you're getting on a forty thousand dollar trailer okay now that you've kind of seen a little bit of the outside and what a mechanic sees and uh, the quality control let's uh talk to the owner here and see what's going on get it from her to get more information hello hello i'm marty and you are cindy cindy with an s or a c or a k c. with a c <laughs> anyways uh now we'll go in and we'll get directly from the horse's mouth 
of what is, how many times has it been to the dealership? Three times. Three times, and for which problems? All solar related. All solar related. And then the microwave. And then the microwave, they're going to replace when I return. And then the uh, refrigerator. Refrigerator moves. <laughs> moves, okay. Well, we're going to go and we'll get you some, some video footage of what that looks like and then uh, get a little bit more information from her, hopefully, and go from there. All right. So problems that you've had. Let's see, we've got, you said the microwave was falling out, right? Yes. Okay, yep, yeah, that, uh, it's not even attached on this side. And that side over there has a screw or two that are attached and falling out, which that's down inside of here, which is the cooktops underneath this. And it, uh, it rocks back and forth. Yeah, the, all the screws just fell out of the thing. That's what I thought. I thought. Yeah, two missing on that side. That one there is, they're ripping out is what they're doing. Good quality. The handles that originally came, where was the handle that was the locks that were originally on this? It was were they, between the refrigerator and the freezer. And there's a little thing you can... Oh, on here. Oh, okay. Okay, so that broke off. That broke off. So I had to get these little childproof locks. So, my so you got some seat travel. belts for it. Yeah. And then the whole thing up here... Open this, you can see. All completely rocks and moves. Yeah. Here, turn on the light. So all it has is these little metal clips. You know, if they put insulation or something back there to give it something to push against, it probably wouldn't have that problem. So those metal clips bend and fall and come loose. You know, maybe they should just through bolt those things, mm -hmm. but that would be too much probably too much work for them in the, in the factory. But yeah, that thing's rocking. Yeah, that whole thing moves. How about the bathroom? Is it leaking? No problems in the bathroom so far. Knock on wood. <laughs> Everything in the bathroom works great. These are the bunk beds. Those are the bunk beds. I use the top one for grandchildren. The bottom one I use for storage. Okay, so we got bunk beds there. Underneath there is the battery, battery stuff. Yep. And this is the battery monitor thing says right now we're at 51 percent come on focus in there we go focus in so 51 percent there not getting much solar today no only well the refrigerator's running but you're okay it's drawn out it's pulling out 1.8 amps so you've got 10 amps on the refrigerator and nine amps coming in from the solar so it's almost enough to run everything yep. and then you said the the table here moved around a lot yeah the table is Rocky, it's only got a, a middle pedestal to stabilize it. So it was constantly. So what we did, we took a pull noodle, cut it in half, and stuck it in between the wall and the table to kind of give it a little more support. Now it's leaning up against it, yeah. You'd think they would have just made it so it was a, a fold down table. Right, that would have been much better. And one cat. And oh, your valances. You had said something about your yes. valances had all fallen all down. The valances, the way they were put up, they just came loose from the wall. So somebody else fixed those for me, put anchors in the wall to actually give them the strength. Oh, so you use the use the type of anchorage that you put the bolt through and it has a little thing on the back side. Yeah. Sheetrock anchorage. Okay, yeah, that would work good because these are pretty thin panels. I had to do that with this one and this one. This long one and the short one. This one has held out for some for whatever reason. What else you got? Anything else that's broken? The drawers. My silverware and storage drawers. They wobble <laughs> and they shouldn't do that. 
um, because of this play, it makes it hard for them to stay on the track, and they're constantly slipping off track. At least the top drawer does. Now when I close the top drawer, usually the bottom one pops out. This time it didn't. The bottom drawer seems to be a little more. Yeah, because it's closer together. to the floor. Right. The attached. The top one definitely is not right. Yeah, the plumbing came apart on my very first trip from Maine to Alabama. Um, the second or third day into the traveling, I stopped over at my nightly stop, I think it was a truck stop, and pulled out the top drawer to get some silver out to make some supper, and the drawer was full of water. The microwave is off its mount, basically, on at least one side, so it's tipping backwards now and the convection feature of that does not work. They are under warranty replacing my microwave. When How long is the warranty on the trailer? It's 12 years on the roof and one year on everything else. And then the solar has been worked on how many times? Um, by the dealer three times. And then I came out here and you straightened everything out. <laughs> now it works. Now it works like it's supposed to be. That's all because nobody knows what they're doing. Right. Yep. Amazing. I mean, I love the camper. I love the layout. It, you know, it's, it's perfect for myself. It's just, I was surprised by the workmanship I've encountered since I've been living in it. It's just not where, what I thought it should be. Paying $30,000 for a camper, I expected a little better quality than what I got. On, on a five star scale, one to five, what, how many stars did you give the quality? of the trailer? A two. A two? <laughs> a two at least, and yeah. And how about the equipment in the trailer? The equipment itself, I think I would give the five. I, I like everything that they've got. I love the 12 volt refrigerator. The AC does a great job of cooling it down when I have power to supply to it. The fireplace works great. I mean, as far as everything they've supplied with it, the TV, you know, all these things work really well. They except just, for the charging stuff back there. Except for work. the charging stuff, yeah. Because that one charger has never worked from day right. one. Right, yep. So. It, worked to, it worked with my alternator when I had the truck hooked up to it, but it was not getting any power from the roof. Right, and that's that one MPPT charger that we bypassed because right. it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, amazing how that works and doesn't work. Yeah, so basically the only solar power I was getting was off my ground Panels. So just a 300, 300 yeah, the watts. 300 watt when I have a total of 700 and I wasn't able to use all of it because of how it was wired and the uh, equipment that they used. Right now, what am I getting? Right oh, I'm at 28 now. Right now it's, right now it's showing that you're, you're getting power so the refrigerators stop the compressor. So there's 28 amps, 27 amps of power all because Crazy Marty rewired it. Right. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> this is an, they do give us this stuff down here to look at. This is an, in total, an intelligent controller deal. So it uh, basically, on your 115 volt circuits, this prioritizes which ones work at what point. So if you wanted to have, let's say, the fireplace take priority of the microwave over the priority of the stove, then you would set it up. That way you don't burn up your trailer it's for 30 amps. You can set it for 30 amps, 50 amps, whatever. Then we have the other control stuff over here, which is the water tank, the great tank, and whatnot. Those seem to be good so far. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I am Crazy Marty, and this is... Cindy. Cindy. I'll get it figured out one day. Someday I'll know who she is, maybe. Anyways, in the meantime, I'm Crazy Marty, and that's Cindy, and this is the... What the heck is this trailer? This is a Palomino Revolve by Forest River. And if you want to get one... Good Just luck. make sure you know somebody that knows how to work on solar. <laughs> yeah, call me. I'll fix it. Call Marty. Good luck, guys. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.